So the Ravens lose AFC North, but they can still actually get a home playoff game. And as crazy as it sounds, yeah, it is pretty crazy. Uh, so let's break it down before we get into it because we got a lot to cover. Um, as you all know, uh, or if you didn't hear, the NFL is they are ruling this game between the Bengals and the Bills a no contest. So that has an impact on the Chiefs. It has an impact on the Bills and the Bengals, of course. But it has a big impact on the Baltimore Ravens, who were looking to fight for the AFC North. Uh, the way that they could have still been fighting for the AFC North is if the Bills would have beaten the Bengals on that Monday night game. Uh, and then the Ravens beat the Bengals in the last game of the season. Even though they the Ravens did lose to the Pittsburgh Steelers, they still had an opportunity uh, to get the AFC North, to win the AFC North. But uh, now they don't have that opportunity anymore. Uh, so the NFL, what they decided is, all right, if Ravens win the game against the Bengals in week 18 and those two teams get matched up in the playoffs, they're like, OK, since the Ravens, they still technically could have had a shot at the AFC North. What we'll do is a coin flip. We'll, we'll, if the Ravens win the game against the Bengals and only if they win against the Bengals, then there will be a coin flip. If the Bengals win against the Ravens, there is no coin flip. Um, but. If the Ravens win against the Bengals and these two teams get matched up the following week in the playoffs, then there will be a coin flip to determine where that game is. So if the, the Ravens could win, they could play their hearts out against the Bengals on week, in week 18, get a kick, a game winning field goal. And it's like, yeah, let's go. Did that coin flip, it lands on a Paycor Stadium, <laughs> the game is in Cincinnati. But if they do all that, all that same stuff happens and that coin flip lands on M&T Bank Stadium, then the Ravens would actually get a home playoff game. It's a crazy situation, um, but the NFL is like, hey, that's, that's all we can do. And I, I, I know it's tricky. I, I know there have been mixed emotions on it and whatnot. And you know what? Let, let, let's just get into this first question uh, from my guy, Plex. And he's a Team Keep It Clean patron. Real quick, shout out to the newest Team Keep It Clean patron, too. My guy, Michael B. And the newest Team Keep It Clean channel members, uh, Jay Frank and Jerron Carlton. Appreciate all of y'all. Let's get into this question now from my guy, Plex. He said, you got to put your own work in around here. He said, before I get started, big shout out to the person who said, Ravens should consider cutting or trading Gus Edwards. But he went into depth on how the roster should be re Restructured. Uh, I thought I was wilding out by myself, but I found a friend at the end of the bar. Here's why I'm here. I have zero issues with how the league handled the Bengals versus Bills game. Had we taken care of business early in the season, we wouldn't have to worry about a coin flip or win percentage or whatever other stipulations are there. In six losses, we had leads at the end of the game in five of them. When one of them, we're playing for the division. When two of them, we win a division outright. The league didn't give us the short end of the stick. We did this to ourselves. Complaining about the circumstances is weak to me. Ain't nothing but a little adversity. It is certainly adversity. I, but I, I, I disagree with that, the, the end part about um, the league. They didn't give the Ravens a short end of the stick. I mean, they, they gave a lot of the teams a short end of the stick. And it wasn't just the Ravens, but a, a lot of teams, they, they took a little blow because of this. Um, so they just, yeah, they just got to deal with it. Um, but I, I have seen a lot of people say, oh, well, Ravens, they didn't deserve the, the AFC North anyway. And with that, I disagree because uh, I've seen a lot of people say the same thing you said. Yeah, the Ravens put themselves in this position, which they technically did. Um, but at the same time, they still put themselves in a the position to be fighting for the AFC North. Uh, even though a lot of us didn't, didn't think that Bengals game would go so good. But, hey, you, you never know. You never know. So they put themselves in a the position to be battling for the AFC North. So they did deserve to be here. They did deserve to be here. That's why I see a lot of people say, oh, Ravens, they, they don't deserve to be in the playoffs. No, they do. They do because they won enough games to get into the playoffs and they won enough games to get into the playoffs two weeks ahead of the end of the regular season. They didn't even have to fight and kick and claw and scream and all that to get into the play. No, Ravens are a playoff team and they deserve to be in the playoffs. How they do when they get there? Hey, we'll see. But they do deserve to be there. Um, so I, I also think they deserve to, to be fighting for the AFC North. Now. Not taking anything away from what the NFL did with the game because it's like it's tough because of scheduling, especially with it being so late in the season. Like, you know, NFL, they, they probably looking for every and they, they still got to vote on this to make it official. But, you know, they were looking for every single possibility that this game could be played because they don't want to lose no game. I know that's why that's why NFL, they were they told the players the whole five minute thing and then they're going to get back to playing and whatnot. They don't want to lose this game. Monday night football game between the Bengals and the Bills. Like I was looking forward to that game like crazy. Uh, I know a lot of us were. A lot of people were because that, that game was it looking like it's going to be a real good one. And it probably would have been. Uh, but you, you, you guys to understand uh, the situation. 
Um, so obviously glad that uh Demar Hamlin is doing really good. Um, so that's that that was first and foremost. Um, but with the game and stuff, it's just it's just one of them crazy like possibly one off situations, man. Stuff like this like never happens. Uh, so the NFL they just they had to pivot, they had to adjust, and they this was the move that they made. Yeah, this feels like a dream. So Tim Keep It Clean, welcome to another episode of Questions from Subs Where you can ask any question you want to And if you want to be a part of it, for the patrons You can send your questions directly on Patreon uh, For everybody else, you can send an email to TeamKeepItClean at gmail.com Do not send an email anywhere else Do not CC any other emails at No, you send one email To TeamKeepItClean at gmail.com Nowhere else, you send it anywhere else your question won't even be a question You will never see it It won't see the light of day But anyway uh, Next question came from another patron My guy Herb uh, Appreciate you for me being a patron for a whole year Anyway you said engraving uh, I hope you and the, the Ohana family are doing well I haven't asked a question in a minute I usually just like to listen, watch, and observe But I got one for you How does team keep it clean in the whole Ravens flock? Think of DC Mike McDonald's job so far I know all the talk is about G-Row and Hawes But let's talk about Mike McDonald We'd love to know your thoughts And the rest of team keep it clean's opinions Keep doing your thing bro I appreciate you Mahalo Appreciate that Herb And thank, thank you for everything man Um I ooh, can't ask my guy perfect one this question Because he, he gonna go off on Mike McDonald He been going off on him for a while Can't ask my guy flirting whiskey about this question Because he been going off on Mike McDonald all season long too um, Mike McDonald he been alright He been alright um, Hasn't been great I'd say he I'd say he been, he been I'd say he been alright um, Like it's like the, the defense They got so many assets They got so many playmakers and whatnot. Um, and the defense, they're just weird because, again, from they they do a lot of bending, but not breaking. But it's like they break, and I know the offense got something to do with it too. Uh, but they they break at the worst times. the The last two minutes of the first half, last two minutes of the fourth quarter, uh, really just fourth quarter period. Like, and I mean overall, first through third quarter defense. All right, let's get it. A fourth quarter. Ugh, that that's what it's been. Um, so they got to work on finishing. They got to work on finishing. That's been a big issue for the defense this year. It's been finishing. Sometimes it's been, hey, man, the offense just, they got us out there all game long, man. We tired. We, we just straight up tired. Then there's been other instances where it's like, all right, offense at the very end of a game, well, close to the very end of the game, Ravens offense, they'll go score, go ahead, field goal, go ahead, touchdown, go ahead, score. And then it's like, all right, let's go. All we got to do is get a stop. And the defense is like, get a stop. Fourth quarter, game-winning drive, please. We ain't getting no stop, baby. So it, it, it's tough. So, I, I mean, it's his first year. Um, but, I mean, hey, it's still a professional. Whether it's your first year or your 14th year, uh, you still are putting something out there. So it's going to be um, criticized and, and analyzed and whatnot. So with Mike McDonald, um, He's done an all right job, but it's just the, the finishing's got to improve. James Washington. Next question came from my guy Anthony. He said, watching Shannon and Skip, they are real high on James Washington. Do you see us going after him? They sure uh, think he could be a steal. No, he's way too young. Where was my bus keys? Next question came from my guy Desmond. Uh, he said, I, I just have a sm few small questions. Did we lose the keys to the bus? <laughs> LOL. I mean, we just had to. It's the only way we can explain Gus only getting three carries with no injury. Uh, who knows, man? They Nobody seemed to have been able to explain it uh, this week, but we used to that. Uh, anyway, he said, second one, why do we have our backup quarterback have more carries than our 1B running back? Oh, that. Well, hey, <laughs> you got to ask your offensive coordinator about that one, buddy. Uh, and he said, third one, instead of pulling Project Pat every play, why not just keep him on Moses' side to help because T.J. Watt was abusing him. Yeah, he he was. But hey, Ravens, um, they're a team that a lot of times they lack the in-game adjustments. They'll talk about it afterwards, be like, oh, we, we should have done that. We could have done that. Maybe we needed to do that. But during the game, it seems to be an issue. He said, fourth one, are you sick of the situational play calling as I am? Shaking my head. Hey, we've been talking about the poor situational play calling for years. For years. So I'm just, it's, it's, it's expected at this point. It's been expected. And it, it is expected and it's, it's continued. So it's like, 
can't even get mad at it no more because, I mean, like, it is what it is. Ravens, they continue doing the same things. We can't really expect stuff to change. Uh, he said, who did he think that fake screen handoff was going to fool? Uh, we already ran two screens for the year. LOL. Fifth one. How do all of our receivers total two catches for 18 yards? Shaking my head. Our offense is so predictable. How many Hall of Famers do we need to call um, before EDC or Steve do something? Thanks for letting me vent. Now I'll go cry on my Ravens pillows. LOL. Next question came from Katie. Roquan or Lamar? Ooh. Hey, Raven, this is my first question, and it's a short one. If you had to only choose one to sign and let one walk, who would you choose? Lamar? Lamar? Like, but anyway, let's continue. She said, Lamar Jackson or Roquan Smith? Me personally, if I could only choose one, it would be Lamar. Even though Lamar has been rough the last couple of games that he's played, I think that's only because the contract has been hanging over his head. And I truly believe if we sign him to a long-term deal that he will return to his 2019 self and win us the Super Bowl and possibly win another MVP. While I would love those things, um, it would all just depend on what the Ravens put around him. Um, I, I just I, I would not want to see Lamar come back to the same old stuff. If if the Ravens are gonna be like, all right, Lamar, we'll bring you back, but they're gonna continue doing the same old stuff, the same old scheme, and the same old personnel and stuff like that. Then what's the point? What's the, what's the point? If if you're gonna bring him back as your franchise quarterback, put pieces around him. It, it, it's as simple as that, but. I don't think the Ravens feel like it's so simple. I hear you. Next question came from my guy, Michael. He said, I hear you live right now on the radio on 105.7. Uh, my man, I hope your subscribers go up. I'm glad to hear that the people, uh, or even on the radio, watch the videos. Keep doing your thing and keep bringing the fire content. I appreciate that, Mike. Yeah, that was fun. I was, uh, so this was from last week, uh, last Friday. At, yeah, a week ago. Uh, when we were on 105.7 The Fan. I, I appreciate you listening to that. And shout out to Tarita and, and Glenn Clark for, for having me on, too. This won't ever happen. Next question came from my guy, Sean. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope you and the fam are doing well. This is going to sound so crazy, and I know it won't happen. Derek Carr just got benched by the Raiders. In my opinion, he won't be there next year. Devontae Adams isn't going to stay there to get passes thrown to him by Jared Stidham. You know they ain't rocking with no Jared, Jared Stidham at the beginning of the year. But anyway, he said, uh, Adams to the Ravens to help us keep Lamar. <laughs> Yeah, you you were right. The, the the subject of your email, this won't ever happen. You spot on with that. Uh, he said, I wish this would happen, but Harbaugh isn't going to go. Uh, and he'll only bring in one of his boys that has the same scheme as Jiro. And hopefully uh, when he leaves. Appreciate the videos and wish you much success in this upcoming year. Appreciate you, man. Lamar Trade. Next question came from my guy, Brandon. He said, I wouldn't want to see this happen. But if it does happen, who and what team would you like to see the Ravens? Oh, oh well, who and what would you like to see the Ravens get in return? Thank you for giving us some of the best Ravens content. I, I appreciate that, Brandon. Um... I mean, uh, yeah, I wouldn't like to see it either. Um, but if they trade, then uh, just a lot of value. Uh, and, and not the value where it's like, oh, well, we really got value. No, no, no. Not the Ravens type of value. Like actual, like real, true value. Multiple first round picks, multiple second round picks. But would getting all that be worth having a bunch of losing seasons? This question came from my guy, Ricky G. He said, hey, Graven, how's your day been? It's been pretty good so far. I mean, it's it's 9.04 a.m. right now. When you're seeing this, who knows? But anyway, he said, do you think that it would be a smart uh, smart idea for the Ravens to trade Lamar to a team like the Lions or Seahawks and try to get a first-round pick and some other picks? I was thinking they could trade Lamar and get Bryce Young or some other good QB in the draft and then use other picks on wide receiver. Mm. I, I, I love how so many people... They have this hope for the Baltimore Ravens, like, oh, if they trade Lamar Jackson, um, then they'll, then they, uh, for whatever quarterback that they get, then they could really, they'll really start putting some wide receivers around them. I just, I don't think anything's really gonna change as far as that. Um, and if it did, it'll be like, oh, great, um, they actually finally start really investing in wide receivers. But it'll also be a slap in the face to Lamar if they did that. It'll be a slap in the face to Flack as well. Because it's like, man, why do you ain't do this like that for your previous franchise quarterbacks consistently? What happened? What, what, why not? But uh, anyway, I, um, whoever they trade him to, I mean, I, well, if they trade him, hopefully they don't. But who knows how this whole thing is going to go. Um, but you said get a first round pick. No, I, I, I'm pretty sure he would go for more than one first round pick. I think two is a minimum. So 
maybe even three. But if, if it's two first round picks, then it would be a bunch of other picks as well. Next question came from my guy Hard Heavy. He said, as easy as it is to get plays from Madden, which at this point would be a better option. Greg Roman can't even do that. Can you tell me how hard it is to look at the top coaches in the league and copy their schemes and plays that slice of defense? Kyle Shanahan, Mike McDaniel, wide receivers are always open. We don't have the talent at the wide receiver position, but this has been all on Greg Roman. Uh, I disagree that it's all been on Greg Roman. I, I definitely disagree with that. Um, but he does have a scheme. His scheme is is him. It's who he is. It's what he's been. It's what it's been. Uh, and the Ravens decided, hey, that's what we're going to roll with. So this is on the Ravens as well, to just them as an organization. Um and I yeah so I mean it is what it is that's they fixated on that scheme that's what they want to roll with and that's the product that we've been getting the offense next question came from Ejon he said Ravens Nation and team keep it clean hope all is well and Gravy, my question is why can't we win big games with the division on the line we blow another double digit lead uh, the offense went three straight three and outs and a penalty to end things and I don't remember the last time the offense scored at least 21 points in a game was it the Jaguars game? I think it was the Jaguars game. Uh, but anyway, uh, stay safe. Uh, Harbaugh, Harbaugh and Roman got to go. LOL. Maybe Lamar will save the day again, though. It's tough to watch without the unanimous MVP winning under center. Yeah, the Ravens offense has been rough. Um, I mean, even with Lamar, it, it, was, it, it had some rough moments this year, too, for sure. Um, but not nearly. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly as much as we've been seeing recently, baby. Accountability. Next question came from Kenyari. Say, what's up, man, Graven? I hope this reaches you well. This is my first question from subs, and I hate it. it has to be on these terms. It's more of a rant, but Greg got to go or someone or something. John struggles with accountability and holding people accountable. Believing is one thing, and I also understand you don't bash your team to the public. Uh, that's all Raven's way as an organization. That's true. Uh, but I mean, come on now, something's got to give You see Green Bay eventually getting it rolling If this offense was built for Lamar, we'd have key players that helps Lamar's strength Not going down that road, but it starts with accountability Ooh, I, I, I love how you worded that, that was perfectly said uh, He said, not going down that road, but it starts with accountability Not just we looking forward to see Lamar get that deal done And different things being implemented Time for that change and spark, let's go Raven mm. If that change and spark happen, that would be great, but... I just feel like it's going to be a lot of the same old stuff as long as the same leadership continues to remain in control. Next question came from Ed Dabo. He said, instead of trading for De DeAndre Hopkins, do you think the Ravens should trade for Mike Evans instead next year? Yeah, healthier. Healthier, bigger wide receiver, playmaker wide receiver. I mean, both options would be great. You, you, In my opinion, you're going to have to pay more for Mike Evans. Like, I don't even think DeAndre Hopkins would go for a first-round pick. Uh, but I think Mike Evans definitely would. Um, but yeah, I, that I would love it. I would not be opposed to that at all. But who's gonna be his quarterback? But anyway, he said, uh, "Here's my vision: big body vet receiver Mike Evans, young emerging star in Bateman, Duve in the slot, draft the speedy receiver to spread the defense out in Robinson for depth. Uh, all of that while still having our tight ends and running game. What are your thoughts? I love it. I love it." But again, my, my biggest question, all right, who's going to be a quarterback? It shall come to the light. Next question came from my boy Julius. He said, hey, Raven, let's get right to it. Ravens didn't build a team around Lamar. They built it on Lamar. Uh, the scheme only works with Lamar because he is the scheme. Giro is using the same plays from Kaepernick days. The X factor is Lamar. It's a shame the Ravens really are trying to win cheap. Look at Huntley. Now it's revealed that Huntley's shoulder injury never went away. And even though he's been playing hurt, the Ravens offensive scheme really brings out the worst in their quarterback. Oh, 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 whoa. Uh, why keep designing runs for your quarterback when they just got concussed? Has anyone noticed Lamar is on the sideline with no headset? Is that not questionable? Mark Andrews said in an interview after the Steelers game, we have a franchise quarterback in Snoop. Yeah, he did say that. He sure did. And I'm like, hold up now, Mark. What are the Ravens telling you to say? Wait a, blink, blink twice if everything is okay. Or blink three times if you're in trouble. Okay, now. Anyway, he said, John didn't even know Lamar was watching the game on the sidelines. How? John didn't realize that Gus was, wasn't getting the ball during the game. Really? How are you the head coach and you have no accountability? It's one thing to have losing seasons. Now you're just losing respect. Plus, belittle us as fans to say we are just at the end of the bar, but we pay club prices on our tabs at the end of those bars at M&T Bank Stadium. Your thoughts? Oh, man, you you were just spot on this, this whole 
thing. I, I loved it. Derek Carr. I mean, I see a lot of y'all talking about Derek Carr recently. Next question came from uh, South End Dive. He said, what's up, Engraven? I feel I am low-key preparing to lose Lamar Jackson. And if they do, what are your thoughts about the Ravens trading Lamar to Seattle for at least two first-round picks and signing Derek Carr? Doing that would give the Ravens two top 15 first-round picks, which would allow us to possibly grab one of those top five QBs and allow that QB to have a possible redshirt year and have an experienced QB to learn from. Oh, so you, you want to double dip at quarterback. So if Ravens trade Lamar, you want to draft a top quarterback and sign Derek Carr. Woo! Oh, buddy, you ain't playing. I wish the Ravens did, felt like you felt at the wide receiver position. But anyway, uh, he said, furthermore, that would allow the Ravens to trade down and get a second pick, uh, which would also allow them to grab a premier wide receiver <laughs> uh, and possibly a corner in the first round. What are your thoughts? Um... I, I wouldn't double dip like that at quarterback. Um, I, I think it should be one or the other. I mean, because, again, rookies, I know that they're getting thrown in faster than ever nowadays. Faster than ever. Um, and, I mean, with the Ravens scheme, hey, it's great for a young quarterback. Great for a young, inexperienced quarterback. But there would just be that lack of growth. Uh, he also said, QB situation. I hope all is well. Uh, first time sending a question. Well, this was your second question right here. He said, thank you for what you do. I, I appreciate you, though. Uh, he said, I would love to see the Ravens re-sign Lamar, but it just seems unlikely that's going to happen. Um, and he said, uh, what are your thoughts on trading Lamar to a team with two first-round picks and a player we may need? Likely a starting caliber corner or defensive end to replace Calais Campbell. Um, uh, he said, it may be a need in order to truly rebuild and put us back in the Super Bowl window. See, that's interesting because... Um, Ravens, they and somebody brought this up before in in in, in a question they called uh, Lamar Jackson revelation, uh, where they talked about like so many holes that the Ravens have to fill this off season because they got a lot of pending free agents. Um, they lot of, they got some positions that are just really like lacking right now. So Ravens, like this off season, they they're gonna have to do a lot of work if they don't want to enter a uh, rebuild mode because it's looking like it, if if they if they end up losing Lamar. Um, that doesn't end everything. That that doesn't really even end all the potential losses that you could possibly have. There could be a lot more. So the they just got like they gotta work miracles this off season. New OC. Next question came from my guy Steve. He said, "I feel like it's time for a new offensive coordinator." It's the same thing from two years ago. The offense is too predictable. What kills me? We run the ball good. Never run play action. Any bootlegs? How about a few screens to the wide receivers or running backs? And last, the name of the game is to keep them thinking on defense. I don't understand why we don't at least throw two or three deep passes a quarter to keep the defense on their toes. Watching this offense is stressful. Yes, imagine playing in it. Next question came from my guy, Dewan. He said, just looking into the future, I just think besides Bowser, our young players have no impact when it comes to pass rush. Just curious about the plan for next season. Are we going to keep relying on signing or re-signing aging vets? I just don't think Adafi is just not there yet, and it's to be determined with Ajabo. So what would you do about this pass rusher situation? Uh, we don't have a pass rusher issue like our wide receiver issue. Oh, he said that we don't want to have a pass rusher issue like our wide receiver issue. Oh, man. Um... I don't know what they're going to do because Justin Houston could be like, you know what, I'm done. Calais Campbell could be like, you know what, I'm done. That's it. And so it would be a Dafi away, a Jabo, and you would really have to hope those boys turn the corner and Tyus Bowser too. Um, so, yeah, you would have to hope. And obviously there's a draft too. Um, I would expect them to spend some draft capital there at the pass rush position. But you would also have to hope that there's some veteran out there in free agency next year uh, that could really just help um, keep your pass rush afloat. Because if, if you're going to be relying on a JPP2, <laughs> yeah, then it, it, it could be rough. Next question came from my guy T.R. and Wayne. He said, what's up, Engraver? How's the family? Hope they're good. Here's my take about the coaching staff. I think it's time for a new head coach and OC because if you think about it, every team in the league has an offensive or defensive background. What do Harps have? Uh, well, he got a little bit of a defensive background when, since he used to coach the DBs for the Eagles. Uh, but anyway, he said, for the past four years, we're still in a predictable offensive scheme, and he's not being accountable for it, and we know why we need an OC. Appreciate your time reading this. Stay cooling like you have been cooling. Appreciate that, Wayne. Um, so, yeah, it, I'm glad you mentioned both um, because, again, it's not just Giro. It, it, it's, it's never been just Giro. Uh, so... We'll see how much accountability is held, how much people are accountable, held accountable and whatnot this offseason. Um, but for some reason, I just I think it's going to be a lot of the same old stuff. This question came from my guy Rave Kingdom. He said, hey, Engraven, it's been a minute since I asked a question, but you've seen how this season has been, so you would understand anyways. 
<laughs> Anyways, I was looking at Tyler Beatty college highlights. I definitely thought he would get his chance here in the preseason. We didn't even get to see him a lot, but when we did see him, he looked pretty sharp. Even showed he can catch a pass for a touchdown. Did we possibly lose a future star? And will we regret losing him? Um, I don't think the Ravens will necessarily regret losing him. I hope he goes to the Broncos and does his thing. I hope he goes off. Um, but as far as running backs, like he was in a tough position with J.K. because that's who they obviously love. They they want him to be their guy. Cause you could tell by how they treat Gus Edwards. Um, so he 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 was up against a lot. And then when they signed Drake, they, of course they're gonna go with the veteran over the new rookie. Then they they signed Mike Davis too. So yeah, he and they kept Justice Hill too. So Beatty was just in a very very tough spot. Um, and I guess he was like, you know what? I'm not gonna wait it out. And I see this opportunity with the Broncos, so let me take it. Next question came from my guy Kyron. He said, Gus and JK usage. Dang Raven, I'm sending this email a few hours after the Steelers game for the third straight week. I'm frustrated with the use of Gus and JK. JK had 17 carries for 93 yards, which was good. Uh, Gus had only three carries for two yards. That's pathetic. Uh, we shouldn't rely on only one of our running backs. Uh, number one, uh, why do you think this is? Uh, after, also, oh, okay, so first question. Well, I mean, uh, we always talk about on here, go with the hot hand. JK was the hot hand, but Gus, <laughs> Gus wasn't even a hand at all. Like... Uh, and what 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 did Giro say? Giro said they didn't like the luck, the looks that Gus was getting. He wasn't getting good looks at all from the defense. And I was just like, okay, well, what looks were you showing them? <laughs> but anyway, he said. Uh, also, I was watching some old highlights from 2017. We would run plays where we'd have two running backs in the same backfield: Alex Collins and Buck Allen. Ooh, shout out to both of them. Uh, he said we fake it up the middle with Allen and pitch it to Collins. Uh, so question two: Do you think we should be running more plays with Gus and J.K. in the backfield? I wouldn't mind that. I would not mind that at all because you got to account for both of them. Um, but if if anything goes how the Ravens been having it go, then the defenses will be like, oh, 35's out there and 27? <laughs> Don't worry about 35 because he ain't going to get the ball anyway. Looking forward to the offseason. Next question came from my guy Sedarian. He said, hey, great. Hope you and the family are well as always. With the way the season is going, I don't see the Ravens going too far in the playoffs. To me, this team, when healthy, has always been a wild card slash divisional playoff team. This offseason, though, has a lot of unknowns. Yes, it certainly does. You were spot on about that. Uh, and these unknowns are getting my interest more uh, more than a future lackluster playoff <laughs> appearance or performance uh, so here are a few unknowns i came with so far greg roman contract is up so there will be an offensive coordinator change if it's in-house well or they could resign him hey uh, but he said if it's in-house would you promote t martin after seeing how wide receivers performed in games this season uh, no fighting to get open no calling for the ball drops etc that is such a great question because so many of us even myself has said it before at times oh yeah promote t martin promote t martin but look at what the wide receivers have been doing now who knows, maybe a change of scenery, him being an offensive coordinator would be better, but usually you like to see a track record of greatness. But you, you see receivers, he's just developed outside of ball. No, 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 that's Keith Williams, my fault. So, hmm, I don't, well, I don't know then. Then, whoa, that's, that could be something right there. Uh, but, yeah, you usually like to see a track record. I was just talking to my guy JT about this like a month ago, and he's the one that brought this up. I didn't even think of this. Um, well, he talked about how, yeah, you, you want to see a track record before you give somebody a promotion, a positive track record. Because somebody got a rough track record, then he'll be like, oof. So, yeah, and we see how the receivers have performed. Um, and we see the quality of the wide receiver that the Ravens are given, but we also see how they perform. Uh, a lot has to do with scheme as well because they get limited opportunities. So it's, I don't know about that one, baby. Uh, he said, will the Ravens be able to extend Lamar or franchise him? Is a trade in the future? Yeah, that's the question. Oh, well, they can certainly franchise tag him. Will he sign it? Or will he just ask for a trade at that point? We'll see. Will Ravens be able to extend Roquan? This certainly seems like a priority, even over Lamar's extension. It certainly does. Uh, Ravens are without a second. But at the same time, Lamar did say, I'm not negotiating during the season. Roquan, apparently they are negotiating during the season. So that's that. Ravens are without a second round. The last time that happened, EDC drafted Hollywood in the first and Boykin... In the third, will he have to go that same route at wide receiver? Personally, I would give up a first for Jerry Judy or Michael Pittman Jr., uh, but I can't foresee e EDC entering the draft during the third round. Uh, yeah, I mean, they still got a first round. Oh, oh, but you, oh, you saying you would give up a first for one of those wide receivers? And then, yeah, no no way that Eric, De Eric DaCosta, like, no, man, this dude loved, like, Ozzy Newsome loved draft picks. Eric DaCosta, like, loves draft picks. So, ain't no way that he's going to be stepping out in the first round like, all right, draft, I'm here. Next question came from my guy Vinny. He said, ain't Graven. Oh, and it's called Fight the Big Fight, Lamar. Hope you're having a great week. If Lamar is, in fact, healthy enough to play, uh, I think he should embrace the role of underdog in this postseason like Rocky and go out 
and fight the big fight. No one believes in us this year to win the whole thing. Now, Lamar always said he wants to win a Super Bowl and told the Ravens when he got drafted, they'll get a Super Bowl out of me. Uh, well, now's the time to at least go out and fight for it. If he comes back for the playoffs, I think it can be very similar to what the Titans did a few years ago. He can get hot like Henry uh, did, but as a dual threat quarterback, upset some teams. But by sitting out, if you're healthy enough to play due to a contract situation, uh, he's just going to throw those positive playoffs opportunities out the window, in my opinion. Getting to the playoffs is a privilege and doesn't come easy in the AFC these days. So can't take it for granted. Uh, at the end of the day, Lamar will get paid just a matter of where. Uh, I hope it's in Baltimore. Uh, but for now, go to war and grind with your teammates and just believe. Ever since losing to the Titans in 2019, it seems like there's been a dark cloud looming over the Ravens. They got to get their mojo back. Hoping the Ravens can bring out some positive vibes to this fan base starting next week. Thanks for reading my message. Hey, that's what we hope so. And apparently that's what the report said from Ian Rappaport, that the Ravens expect Lamar Jackson back for the playoffs. And Ian Rappaport said he doesn't think that Lamar being out is contract related. He said it's just because of his injury. That there's still some swelling or whatnot. He ain't ready. He ain't 100% yet. So that's why he's been waiting. Yeah, this feels like a 